All right, awesome, and we are live. Welcome to the Cool Data Project Show. And if you are using APIs to build large language models, you should check out Comet's new functionality for working with um, managing prompt chains. Today, uh, yeah, right? <laughs> so I'm super excited today to have Josh Starmer on with us to tell us all about um, StatQuest and the different projects that he's been working on. Um, so Josh, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about StatQuest? Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and I have a YouTube channel called StatQuest with Josh Starmer. And uh, what I try to do is I try to teach data science related topics like machine learning, statistics, visualization, stuff like that. Um, I've been doing it for about six years. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It's a real passion of mine. Yeah. Bam. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> I love it. <laughs> exactly. Bam. We got a fan out there. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no. And I'm a fan too. I've absolutely watched your videos on neural networks. Um, yeah. fantastic explanation of the material. I, yeah, no, actually you're probably one of the first, um, channels that I go to, uh, for statistical concepts for sure. Oh, cool. Thank you. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about what you've been building recently? Yes, I would love to. Uh, so, um, cause I'm really excited about it. I have been, I haven't, as you mentioned, I've got a series of videos on neural networks and I am currently working on a, a video explaining how transformers work. And I'm excited about this for a many, many, many reasons, uh, because, uh, I started out. I started out StatQuest with Josh Starmer doing statistics. Mm -hmm. And most things in statistics uh, have been around for a really long time. The t-test has been around forever. Uh, and a lot of the related methodologies uh, associated with t-tests and ANOVAs and all those things, they've been around for a really long time. Um, Oi, Brazil. Um, <laughs> anyways, they've been around for a long time. Uh, whereas, uh, transformers have only been around, uh, since like 2017. Uh, so it's very, I mean, for me, incredibly, uh, contemporary and, uh, and very new and, and I'm excited that I've like, I don't know, I've kind of been doing stuff that's like been the foundations for a long time. And it's cool that I'm finally, after all these years, finally getting to sort of a state of the art. Uh, topic. Uh, so if you're not familiar with transformers, transformers are sort of the, um, the, the architecture that large language models are built on. Uh, so chat GPT and all those other things that you hear about all the time right now are all based on the architecture of a transformer. And I'm, I'm excited because like when I'm done, I will know how these things work. And I'm really, I'm so curious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome. Right. And we were chatting before too about that difference when you're working on something that was created a hundred years ago and all that information is online Yeah, you can use. And then all of a sudden you're working on something that's newer and you've got to go read the paper and there's less available. Um, and actually, does that excite you more when there's, when it's like a little bit harder to put together or. Uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I am of the opinion that statistics have been poorly taught for their entire duration of their existence. And so I'll be honest, statistics, basic raw statistics that have been around forever with tons and tons of, of teaching materials out there. Uh, it's still like, it's still super hard for me to, to figure out how to, co to convey these, these topics. And I feel like I'm still to even now i'm still thinking about ways to do it that's better uh ways that could be improved um i feel like i finally figured out the biggest block i have for myself um which nobody's ever talked about and maybe it's just a personal block and maybe nobody else has this block with statistics but for me I, I finally realized that what the big block was, was um, I'd spent my, you know, 18 years, not 18 years, 12 years, uh, learning basic math all the way through calculus. Uh, and, you know, this is all stuff that you can use for doing statistics. 
However, when you're doing basic math all the way through calculus and high school and, and college and whatnot, all those uh, problems that they give you have a single answer. Mm. Two plus two equals four always. Um, you know, you, you calculate the area under some curve with an integral in calculus. It's going to be the same area every single time. Statistics is fundamentally different in its approach in that um, it's it's about it's about things being different, not things about not. It's not about things always being the same and always being reproducible. It's not about that. It's about how do you deal with variation and the fact that everything's different all the time. And then in statistics, the, I feel like the way statistics looks at basic math, it says you're taught to believe two plus two equals four. But let's think about that. What does that really mean? You know, two two of what? Two apples plus two other apples. Now, if I get two different apples that are slightly larger and two other apples that are slightly larger, I end up with four apples that are all slightly larger than yours. Is that the same four? It's a different four. It you know, how are we measuring what four means? Um, and, and that's, and all, and that's the big thing that's been hard for me with statistics is understanding that like all those things I learned for years and years and years and had beat into me so, so, uh, effectively by my teachers <laughs> that are like, but statistics is like, no, the world is actually different <laughs> and there's different. And it's like, and so, so once you think about it in that respect of all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I understand statistics. Um, uh, or I'm starting to understand statistics because I understand the most fundamental concept, which is everything's different all the time. Um, anyways, I, I apologize for rambling on that point, but it's, but it's, but it's true. It's like statistics is, even though it's old, it's new for me. Um, and even though there's lots of resources, a lot of them I think are created by people who are, who have already had that epiphany and it was obvious to them. For me, it wasn't obvious for me. It wasn't like, Oh yeah, sure. Everything's different all the time. For me, it was more of like, I, ha I had to like think about what that meant and I had to, and it took a long time for it to like penetrate my thick skull. Um, but it did. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's interesting to hear somebody else say that because I, you know, I feel like myself, everything that I really understand, like conceptually, yeah. I had to really, you know, I, I, you, proof by induction or <laughs> yeah. all these things like didn't make sense or even just calculus in general like know. you know when you, when I, you can get by in a calculus course differentiating and taking integrals without actually mentally tying that to you know the area under a curve and what that means and yeah. you know um and it's very easy to do that it's very yeah. easy to go through without actually tying it um so yeah, and so I'll definitely be looking for when your transformer video comes out as well. I will be looking right. for that. Yeah. Um, do you have a motivation behind these different projects? Um, I I have a motivation behind pretty much everything that I do, uh, which is I just love uh, this feeling that I'm growing somehow, mm -hmm. and and learning something new is a great way for me to feel like I'm growing. Um, and so I just love learning. And so a lot, it's funny because a lot of people do think I was sort of like born knowing all these things. Right. Um, and I actually, you know, when I, when I made my first video on neural networks, I didn't know how they worked. I mean, I knew how they worked while I learned how they were working while I made the video. I didn't make the video and then learned how they worked. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I learned how the process of making the video was how I learned. And, and the, and the process of making a video about transformers is how I'm learning about transformers. So I'm growing and I just love that sense of like, you know, I'm, I've got knowledge I didn't have yesterday, you know, um, yeah. I, I just, I just love that. And, and, and that's, and that's kind of the way I approach almost everything in life is, is, is there, is there going to be a way for me to grow? Uh, by doing this or spending time doing this, will I grow? And if the answer is yes, chances are I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs>
No, too. But um, do you get excited to go like down the rat hole? You, like we were talking about yeah. a lot of these blogs, right? Yeah. And a lot of times I'll like notice that something is maybe missing that I want somebody to tell me. And I'm like, I wonder if they just don't know that. Right. But like you have to yeah. piece together all this yeah. stuff. And so do you find yourself doing like lots of research, pulling yeah. things together? Yeah, mm -hmm. tons. Tons and tons of resources, uh, research from tons and tons of resources. Um, yeah, that's a fun, that's a, that's a fun part too. Cause, uh, that's all, that's kind of where the learning happens and a lot of the, a lot of the growth happens. So that's really exciting. Um, it's fun for me, um, to, uh, you know, cause I can learn a lot, but it's also fun to see, to think like, well, what can I do that's different? You know, yeah. what, every you know, there's a million blogs and a million YouTube videos on transformers. What are they? What are they saying? Which is what I read and I try to absorb. What are they? And I try to understand. But what are they not saying? What's missing? What needs to be? What What needs to be there? Um, and and that's another problem that's kind of fun to try to solve. Um, is to is to look is to look for the blank spaces. You know, and and those sometimes are harder to see because uh, some presentations are so convincing and so slick and so awesome and yes. seem so complete that it's sometimes difficult to realize that there are there are gaps that that I could I could contribute something to I could fill in those gaps, um, and so that's a fun fun. It's like a it's it's uh, you know I get really excited once I discover there's a gap. And I'm like, oh, no one's ever done it that way, or or no one's talked about it this way, or they never talked about this little thing or, or I'm like, I was like, Oh, and that, I love that because one, I, I, I just grew a little bit cause I learned something. Uh, but also because I just, I feel like I, I'm going to be contributing something of, of value and of, of worth. Uh, and I won't just be re what, repeating what other people said. I'll be adding something new, uh, mm -hmm. to sort of the whole educational, materials that are available for people and and some people will some people can go to the original manuscripts and they can read those straight through and they're like i got it i got it and that's great and some people might look at those and go that doesn't make any sense to me and it's nice to know that there's places that they can go mm -hmm. to to learn uh and and i'm going to help some of those hopefully help some of those people uh uh who um who need to have alternative ways to learn what's going on yeah, awesome. Now, has there been like a a theme to your projects or do you just, you know, you'll finish Transformers and just pick something random or, you know, how, how are you thinking about this? Yeah, I definitely have themes. Um, I mean, I've been I've been doing this neural network thing for a long time. Uh, and I, I have to let me do a shout out to my sponsor, Lightning AI. Uh, they've been great. Uh, in supporting me on my current theme of doing neural networks. Um, and so, yeah, so I've just, uh, I've, been, I've gone, the goal for, for this, this series on neural networks is to go from the most basic to the most state of the art transformers and large language models and how to, you know, theory, all that stuff that goes on in the head, and then also do how to code it. Uh, mm -hmm. so I want to, I want people to, um, to, to see kind of how it's done or how I would go about coding these things. Um, and so that's a, that's a major theme. However, I've, I've got several themes that I'm really excited about for the future. I, Cause I mean, neural networks will be around for a long time and will continue to evolve. Uh, but, but there's going to be a time where it's time to move on for me and, and talk about other things. And I'm already excited about talking about Bayesian statistics. That's been on my mind for a long time. Um, I've had a visualization in my head now for like three years, just sitting there waiting to like, you know, be drawn out and, and presented. Uh, and I, that's going to be a number of, of, that's going to be a whole series, a whole playlist of videos. I'm also desperately trying to get to uh, a stack quest series on time series analysis yeah. and just dealing with time series data in general. Uh, I know that's a big field right now and, and, and this is good. 
I know absolutely nothing about it. And that what makes it good is like, it's such a growth opportunity for me. I'm so excited. I, I can't wait to learn about all this stuff. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Wow. And I, you know, I love time series. It's one of those things that when people say, you know, oh, I'm going to get into data science, like what sort mm -hmm. of topics? I always mention time series because what business hasn't ever wanted to know what's happening over time? And, um, you know, I actually didn't learn it in grad school. I learned it on the job and I was really fortunate. But afterwards, you know, every job I've gone to, it's been like, hey, can you do this? And it's like, Yes, I can. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. It seemed just so useful, so apropos, so like on point to what we're doing. And uh, and that'll also I know some neural networks, you know, work in this domain as well. And mm -hmm. so it'll be it'll be kind of cool to see the the overlap, but also the different approaches. You know, there's a more statistical sort of grounded approach. Uh, and there's just different approaches. And I and I just want to look at all of them because it's to me, it's such a fascinating thing because I, I used to work, I mean, I'm going to ramble a little bit, but I used to work in a, a laboratory that uh, did a lot of what's called um, transitional, transitional research. Anyways, uh, I worked with people in clinics, in hospital <laughs> clinics. Yeah. And, and hospital clinic data is like all time series all the time, right? You've got people that come in uh, and all they're like, I've got this problem. And they come in and they're like survival you know, analysis. Yep. Exactly. There's survival analysis. There's there's yeah, and you know, it, it sounds kind of gloom and doom, but it could also be like, you know, how long before you just have a uh, a remission or um, you know, there's all there's so much time series in medicine and and business and finance. It's all time series, you know. Yeah. So I'm really excited and I'm hoping I'll get back to my roots a little bit and and get back into sort of biological and kind of human physiology physiological data. Um so I can I can hopefully help my former co-workers uh because I know this is a, these are things they work with all the time and it'll be fun kind of like getting back to my roots and and making stat quests that address their needs. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, ah, uh, causal ML uh, and related topics. I, uh, that's a good question. I've been, I've been thinking about it. I'm very scared by causal, any causal anything. Yeah. <laughs> I, I find it very intimidating. I'm, uh, I'm a little, I'm a little nervous about it because I feel like the feel, I mean, what you're talking to like the guy that like has most of my career have, have you know, talked about t tests and things like that yeah. um and so i'm very comfortable with fields that are very established and the causal stuff is all very relatively speaking very new and 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 it's and it's funny because it's funny that you would ask about that because i was afraid of i was afraid of making a series on neural networks for that same reason i was afraid of it and I've learned so much and I'm so proud of myself. And I'm like, okay, yeah, let's do that. So now that you mentioned that, now that I realize I'm afraid of causal stuff, causal inference, causal ML, all those things, I'm afraid of them. But like, now I'm like, well, that means I got to do it. <laughs> I feel like I just need to be aware of it. Cause now, you know, one of the things I've always said is when you get model output, that's correlation, not causation. You yeah. need to set up a hypothesis test to show that there's a causal relationship. And every once in a while, I'm like Googling and being like, where is the state of this research? Are people using causal, you know, know. methods now where like yeah. that statement isn't even true because it's, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be it someday, you yeah. know, yeah. waiting for it. Yeah. Um, um. What tools do you find yourself using the most? Uh -huh. I so I've got I do have my favorites. Um, I make I make all of my presentations. I make them in Keynote. I'm a, I used to do them all in PowerPoint. I'm a huge Keynote. I love Keynote now. I wrote a book in Keynote. Ooh, <laughs> the StatQuest Illustrated Guide to Machine Learning. It's okay. probably the only book ever written in Keynote. Um, yeah, but I was just like, I tried other things. Uh, I tried all these other different ways to write a book. And I was like, I tell you what, I'm just going to write it in Keynote. Um, and so I did. And I love it. Um, but I also like, so right now, to keep talking about what I'm doing right now, I'm doing this thing on Transformers. And I'm actually coding it in 
Python or roughly PyTorch and PyTorch plus Lightning. Um, and I'm also coding it in R simultaneously. Whoa. Are you an R guy? Or? I have an R past, uh, but I love. Yeah. there's certain things I love about R and there's certain things I love about PyTorch and Lightning. I, uh, and... And I'm doing, I'm writing both programs simultaneously, which is, which isn't a great idea. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to recommend this to anyone uh, because the, our, our notation uses like an arrow and, and there's a equal sign in Python. That's the, well, I think you can use the equals without having to use the arrow now in, in R. In I R. That. Uh, yeah. That, that'd be newfangled. <laughs> <laughs> uh you know we'll let the kids do that anyway uh, i'm 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 just i only know how to write r the way i learned how to write r and to do anything else would probably cause me to have a brain hemorrhage uh spontaneously but but i'm writing it at the same time and uh, you know what i love about um r is it's just like it's it does it does it does basic math really simply Okay. And a lot of what I'm doing right now is basic math and, and neural networks are, are, they sound fancy, or, but deep down inside, all they are, are it's basic math. I mean, occasionally you'll do something crazy, like take the square root of something, or you might raise something, you know, have E raised to something. Uh, and that's about as crazy as things get. You, occasionally you'll take the log, but it's still like just basic. We're not doing, I'm not integrating. I'm not like, doing anything crazy. Um, and so I, and, and R is just great for doing just basic math and, and, and making it easy to kind of like do it and hit return and just see what the output is. Bam. It's right there. It's, it's, uh, I mean, Python is interpreted as well, but it's just not as, uh, convenient to use it as an interpreted language. It's easier to use for me. It's easier to use Python sort of as like, as something that you like execute blocks instead of individual lines. Um, mm -hmm. and so, um, so what I'm doing is I'm writing the code in, in, in Python with PyTorch plus lightning, and I'm using R to check the math and make sure everything is consistent and working as expected. Um, and, and so far so good. I'm about half, I've got the, in, I just finished coding up the encoders. There's a, there's two parts of a transformer an encoder side and a decoder side. And I just finished coding up the encoder side and all the math checks out on both sides and I'm nice. like, yes. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you had any projects that were like way harder than you expected or really threw you off? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, there's some that I've never, I've never succeeded in, 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 in under actually understanding how to do how to, uh, I understand um, there's this thing called uh, partial least squares. Um, mm -hmm. yep. And I understand the concepts and I almost understand how it works underneath those concepts, but I don't. And I've been working on that maybe for about two years now. And it's not like I work on it all the time, but I just come back to it and I poke at it and I go, Yep. Still not, still not going anywhere. And that sometimes things are tough. Uh, so, you know, like, uh, one of my videos on, on principal component analysis, that was sort of like a two year struggle that I succeeded in. And I was nice. like, oh, I get it. You know, I got that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's, it's fun having some of those major epic marathons sort of under my belt. They're very encouraging that if I just keep poking at it, I'll, I'll get it sooner or later. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, all pretty much anything I do related to statistics is something that I worked on for a really long time. Statistics, as I was talking about earlier, was really hard for me to understand for a lot of reasons. Um, my general, I've got a whole series on something called general linear models, which is basically linear regression used for everything. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. you can do, you can like, you can, you know, you can vacuum your floor with linear regression. Apparently <laughs> you, you can do, you can, you can do pretty much anything with it. It's amazing. Um, and I did a whole series on it and, um, but it took, it was one of these things that took me years to sort of like understand how to visualize it, how to get 
the visualizations correct to the math. Cause it's not just like, it's not just like, Oh, here's a, a way to visualize it. When I make my visualizations, I want them to actually correspond to the actual math. The whole, yeah. Yeah. So you can say this equation equals this picture, uh, you know, and I, and you can show that they're equivalent and I can say, okay, so this term in this equation is this, you know, and I can, I can point out the equivalences and it just took me a long time to figure that out. Um, but I did. And I'm really proud of that. Uh, so it's fun. It's, it's, it's fun to feel like I've climbed these huge, at least in my personal journal, my personal quest, I've climbed some pretty big mountains, uh, and I've made it to the top. Um, and that's, no, um, and that's so awesome. Cause I bet you like really retain that information as well. I had a friend call a couple weeks ago. He needed help with like a fractional factorial test design. And I was like, I don't know, man, (laughs) 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 wish I could help. But I mean, you know, there's so many things that you had at one time that you no longer have, but I'm sure like, you know, going through all the steps that you're going through, you probably know a lot of things cold or I've I've got design (laughs) matrices down. I've got those down. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Um, did you already tell us about your next project? What you want to do? I mean, maybe. I mean, we did talk about uh, how I I want to do may possibly causal analysis and causal mm-hmm. ML uh, because it scares me, <laughs> and so I have to climb that mountain. Oh, and you said uh, time series. Time series is a big mm-hmm. one. I want to do Bayesian and a Bay- Bayesian statistics is one of these things that like I've known about now for a really long time. And I've always been very like, are you kidding me? You know, like I'm just yes. very skeptical of Bayesian methodology, yes. um, largely because it's like, uh, it's sort of one of these things. It's like academics swear by it, yes. but you don't see it anywhere else. That was that, actually a question I wanted yeah. to ask you too, because yeah. I did have a, a, you know, somebody who worked in the headed up was yeah. the head of the statistics department or whatever. He was yeah. new, came in, wanted to switch our hypothesis testing over to using Bayesian, <laughs> um, and I just wanted to know what your thought would be on that. Would you think the guy was crazy, or would you be into it? I mean considering his background it is what i expect you know <laughs> if, if when you say if you say academic and you say statistic statistics i'm almost uh, certain you're going to be next thing you're going to say is oh and they're a bayesian and uh yeah. and yeah. i think uh, and i so i've all and but to be honest once you get out of academics and you get into everywhere else outside i don't want to just say the real world because academics can be a, a very real place as well um <laughs> uh, but uh but you know like for example uh you pull up any spreadsheet program right you can do t-tests you can do regressions you can do all these things name one bayesian thing you can do uh built into a spreadsheet probably i can't think of anything there might be something i i'm, I'm not saying there isn't but i can't think of anything um and I think that's telling, right? That mm-hmm. tells me a lot about sort of where Bayesian methodology is, really. It, it is just sort of something that's sort of siloed off and is used by these sort of like statistical monks, uh, yeah. you know? And, 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 and that's fine. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. And I, and I personally, I feel like one, one of the big um, things that gets in the way is uh, how, how it's taught. Um, and I, and I want to take a stab at it. I, I think I can, I think I can crack the code at least for myself and for people that kind of learn the same way that I do sort of visual learners. Um, uh, I think it'd be fun. And, and I think the other thing that has to happen is, is something, one of these methods has to be incorporated into, um, you know, Excel or something like that. And I believe it's going to happen soon uh, because things are starting to blur between your laptop and sort of cloud computing. Um, And a lot of Bayesian methodology is, is computing intensive. Um, The, the older method like T-test and all those older method methods 
are, are one of the things that's great about them is you can kind of just do them on pencil and paper. And, but Bayesian stuff only works if you've got some computing power, uh, you know, behind you. And right. now that it requires less data too, right? Like, I think I remember it's not super data heavy. It's super exactly, everything yeah. else heavy, you know, right? and, and, and then, but now yeah. we have the compute. So it's like, yeah. that's not even a feature anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. So, uh, so, you know, but, but, you know, when I'm, when I, when I'm working in the, when I was working in the hospital, you know, there's all kinds of people that have these rare diseases and there's relatively little data out there. It's not like, um, language, right. Where I can take all of the Wikipedia and train a big model on, you know, that, or I can take all of the, you know, academic or, or, um, scholastic manuscripts and train a neural network on that. That's massive data sets, you know, in the, in the clinic, they might have five patients <laughs> that have this thing and they present, you know, they don't all present the same symptoms. You know, there's the data is noisy. Uh, and that's really where Bayesian stuff shines. You know, I know we live in this world of big data, but but it's also, it's still a world of small data and, and, mm -hmm. and there's a place for Bayesian stuff. And, and I think that sooner or later, uh, you know, I'm going to be using like Google spreadsheet or Microsoft Excel or something like that. And it's just going to be, it's just going to have a little function, like do a Bayesian version of this. And because it's going to just do the compute in the cloud for me automatically without me ever having to think about it, it'll just be a seamless, um, mm -hmm transition or not transition it'll just be a seamless operation of me thinking i'm doing everything locally but getting results computed in the cloud and i i think i think i think that'll happen soon and i, and I think it'll be helpful if people actually understood what was happening <laughs> in the cloud so i'd like to get there someday soon yeah no i see that i'm with you yeah. yeah. And I feel you on the, like right now, it's only the academics. I did my, yeah. my master's thesis was Bayesian. And then I, I haven't touched it since other than the one guy yeah. at that one company that was talking about moving yeah. testing and everyone was like, you're crazy. We're not changing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> So if you were to recommend resources for the mm -hmm. person who's looking to get into, you know, uh, uh, the data profession, whether yeah. that's ML or yeah. brush up on stats or whatever, do you have um, some favorite resources that you'd share with them? Obviously, StatQuest. Yeah, I'm a big fan of StatQuest. Um, yeah. I'm a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love, uh, I love there's, there's, a um, I, I always, I mean, even though a lot of the original manuscripts are like super hard to read and tough, I would recommend taking a stab at it. Uh, even if you don't understand everything, or even if you only understand a very small portion, uh, you're going to get some insight just looking at the figures, looking at what's going on, the original figures, um, reading the captions, you're going to get some new insights that you can, just can't get anywhere else. Um, it's worth, it's worth doing it. Uh, the other thing is, is I'm, I'm a huge fan of a handful of, of sites. Uh, there's, there's, I don't know, you'd think I would remember the name of this. Uh, there's a site at UCLA for like data science consulting or something like that. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, but just, just say you, UCLA, like, um, I don't know, data science or regression or whatever. And cool I've spent stuff. some time there, yeah. some serious time there. <laughs> and, they, and it's amazing because they have exam they have like they have the theory and then they have the examples in like every language imaginable, you know, inclu including R. Um, I actually I, they might not have Python examples. Um, but they do have a lot of different languages and they may actually have some Python these days. Anyways, they've been I lo just love that site. It's super helpful for understanding concepts. Um, Penn State also has a great, for basic statistics, they have a great online sort of repository of knowledge that I'm, and I'm, that back when I was doing more statistics stuff, I used to get really excited about. Um, uh, but now these days with the, with the neural networks, I'm mostly just relying on on well i'm relying on the on the original manuscripts but get this i'm finding cool stuff in the weirdest places github uh maybe that's not weird for other people um, <laughs> that's right, what, right, there's people listening being like really i spend a lot of time there <laughs> yeah I, 
I'm finding I'm finding fantastic tutorials on GitHub. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm trying to give them shout outs at my in my videos now because there's just some fantastic stuff there. I used to just I used to I don't know I just used to not I'm, I I used to not it, didn't, it just didn't it didn't appear on the radar I guess is what you'd say it just didn't even show up but now it's showing up all the time mm -hmm. and I'm just finding great stuff and I, and it's just making my life a lot easier I guess yeah right yeah. yeah. Um, is there anything else you, uh, feel like we didn't cover that you'd like to share with everyone before we. Yeah, I do actually. Uh, I do have, uh, a, a one thing a lot of people do, uh, people, you know, on YouTube or whatever, they're like, a lot of people ask me where, where, where can I get data? What do you recommend for, you know, training my model or whatever? Where can I get data? And. And I've been thinking about that. I used to just actually tell, I used to tell people places you could actually get data. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm revising my statement. Uh, and I, I think, I think what people need now, less than data, are to, are to meet people that have data. Instead of going to a website, you need to find a person uh, that has data. I know that sounds impossible, right? Because it's like, who has who has data i mean it's like can i just google who has data or whatever um no but like say like you're you're trying to teach yourself data science you're trying to teach yourself yeah let's just take data science for example you work at a company i don't care what that company does it generates data mm -hmm. there's data there and there are people at that company that are in charge of it that collect it um and those are the pe that's where you need to go to get your data um or say like it, maybe you don't work you know you don't work at a company you're in a school right there's data there's data everywhere around us and it's cre it's created and collected by different people um is it the coolest sexiest data out there maybe not but it's data that people care about and they actually probably want something to be done with it i feel like a lot of what people do when they're teaching themselves data science is they they kind of go down this 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 path of using popular data sets that they downloaded from some website and that they can show that their model you know that they built has the same performance as somebody else's of the same model or whatever okay great but did that help anybody no did you learn how to help people with data did you learn how to solve real data problems no all you learned how to do was to copy somebody else and that's unfortunately not very useful in a practical setting. Mm -hmm. In a practical setting, you have to help people. You can't just copy somebody else, right? You've got to actually like, you got to deliver. And the only way to really know if you're doing that is if you're working with someone who generates data. So my new my new thing to the world of, of people wanting to learn data science is stop trying to use, you know, standard data sets i mean that might be nice to calibrate to make sure like yeah okay i can actually i can at least like train this in a reasonable way and i know what i'm doing but in order to really know what it is to be a data scientist you actually have to be a data scientist you have to learn what it's like to work with people uh with real data sets and and solve real problems no i like that and um it just made me think about too, I feel like, you know, I don't know if it was like at some, because the titles have changed so much over the years, but at one point it sort of felt like the data analyst or somebody else might be the person who gathers the data and the data scientist is the person who builds the models on it and interprets it. And I just remember always thinking that like, no, no one's ever going to pull data for me. I'm going to pull my own data because I want to know exactly what every column means and yeah. I want to know exactly like what that is, because then when, you know, you run your analysis and you are interpreting coefficients, it's like, well, what does this mean yep. if I don't know sort of how it was sourced? And, and I don't, I don't trust other people. Like That's this, exactly right. You know? um, and, and you shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to do it. You got to do it yourself. And there's just no other way around it. Unfortunately, it's hard. It's really hard work. And that is what it is to be a data scientist is to do mm -hmm. really hard work. No, and you do learn more that way too. Like when yeah. I 
took videos of the bus passing my house and made it in the frames. And then, you know, that was, I, I learned more about working with image data there than I would have had I just downloaded something from Kaggle for sure. Exactly. And you solved a real problem. Bam. You get a triple bam for that one. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so if somebody would like to find and follow you, how would they go about doing that? Please follow me on YouTube. I would be in your debt. I would appreciate it to no end. I'm also on LinkedIn and I'm also on Twitter. Uh, but please follow me on YouTube. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for yeah. uh, coming out today. Thank you so much, Josh, for coming on. This was a lovely conversation. I've absolutely enjoyed talking with you. Um, thank and... you. It's been great talking to you as well. I really appreciate it. All right. Awesome. Thank you, everyone.